Hi, I'm the Multifarious Fisherman. This is Seven Fish, and today we are going to put together a portable helix for my kayak. Hi, we're back here. This time we're at the lake. I have installed the Helix 5 on my kayak. We're going to try to set it up as a portable unit so that we can use it on the ice and so that we can use it in my kayak or in a boat. I'd like to do some mapping with this unit and the unit is capable of building internal maps if you have the right SD card. It's a zero line card. I have a number of bodies of water that are small bodies of water and or private bodies of water that are not mapped that I would like to get some better mapping on and I would like to utilize that map in ice and in open water. I'm going to build the portable unit in a ammo can. Uh, this is an Allen can. It's metal. Probably a little extra. You don't really need to do that. Z did one with a Garmin unit portable. It's our most viewed video. That unit he did in a plastic box within a plastic box and certainly that's an effective way. I wanted to do something a little different and like I said I don't mind that it's a little bit extra. It is a sealed box. I'm going to build it in a box that will readily easily hold the batteries that I mentioned. I actually hold two of them if you wanted to rig it that way. I likely won't because the runtime will be ridiculous anyway with a 10 amp hour brute battery. What I will do probably is fill the additional space with styrofoam. You could utilize it to store your transducer or that kind of thing and, and that's an option. Uh, but I may fill it with styrofoam so that it keeps the battery insulated a little bit from the cold during the ice fishing weather. I plan to utilize a ram style mount to mount my Helix 5. That will allow me to mount this ball on my kayak, which will allow me to put the unit up on top where I can see it and the power source down inside the kayak where it's not in the way and keep the weight a little bit lower, which I like. It'll also allow me to mount that ball onto my can so that I can set the helix on the ice. I've done this all with stainless steel hardware. I have all of the parts I need. Big fender washers for things that I'm mounting on my kayak that I don't want to pull through that. I went with some Allen head hardware and the nylock nuts so that when I tighten them they don't tend to loosen up. I also have this Scotty transducer mount. It has this vertical shaft which you can adjust up or down so that it gets in the water, not too deep, but where you want it. And then it has this guy here which will mount on the kayak and it'll pop in and out of that if I need to uh, get it out of the way of something if I'm loading or unloading or just getting into real shallow water and worry about breaking it off. So, okay, I've got my hummingbird gimbal with the Allen bolts in there. I put it on my ram mount ball that's made for the Helix. I'm gonna invert that. Washers are on. Okay, I have hardware, Allen headed hardware. That's all rigged up. Let's see what comes in our transducer mount. We have the Scotty mount, conveniently pre-fitted with Stainless hardware, that did not come with it. I just, that's where I stored it when I was putting all my stuff together. I'm gonna go drill four holes in my kayak and get that guy mounted in the right location. To it, we will affix. This is the part that locks into the Scotty mount. Nice thing about this guy too is that we can mount it this way. It also can go in this way, depending on how it fits on my kayak best. I may rig this guy this direction so that I can have the push button toward me. This then mounts to this with a wing nut hardware that is in this bag. There is also the bottom portion of the slider which mounts to the transducer. So this will right in there and be able to adjust to make sure that it gets into the water. I will be putting thumb screws on top and bottom of that. I have one long nut which holds this part to this part, utilizing this system in between them. And then this guy goes right in there. 
the nuts already installed and I can tighten that and make it more difficult or less difficult to adjust. I'm going to take the two parts of the adjustable length arm. Each of them has a slot and a hole. Each hole needs to line up with the other slot. These wing nuts accept a stainless bolt. And then on the slider have square, have two square nuts. Make jokes as you will. I'm gonna fit the bolt into the square nut. Similarly, going to place, place the square nut in the track, run the wing nut into it, and now it's tight, but it's adjustable. And when you have it the length you need, you just tighten those, and then it, it doesn't slip on you. The next thing I need is a set of nuts for my transducer mount. I now have that in place. If I loosen that, it will allow you to adjust your angle of your transducer, tighten it down, and she holds. And we turned this stack of this stack of parts into a kayak transducer mounting system. So the next time you see this stuff, it'll be on my kayak. Hi, we're back here. This time we're at the lake. I have installed the Helix 5 on my kayak. I have finished the power supply in this box. Got the cord hanging out the side there. Lighting is terrible. Let's turn this way. Put a grommet in there. You can see I got three holes to mount the ball to. When I use this later today on a canoe, I will have the ball mounted on the box and that will allow me to put my unit on there. I finished installing the transducer onto the transducer holder. I did need to drill the bottom of this mount out to accept the slightly larger screw that was supplied with the transducer. There's plenty of beef there so that's not an issue. Stainless hardware on that too, that was provided by the locator manufacturer came with the transducer. I used one of the shims from the transducer, um, which gave me the right depth and makes it sit correctly. Where's this battery box gonna sit? In there with your feet? Oh yeah. If, I can push it clear up if I need to. Oh, with your feet? Yeah, I got six foot of cord. And we'll obviously Mount that up in a minute. Are you gonna power it on right here or in the water? Oh yeah, let's, let's do it. Uh oh. Now, Z had an idea for filming another video where we launched me down the bank. I do have. <laughs> I do have a little water in the boat. <laughs> The concept here, I've got my Helix mounted. I've got my Scotty mount. It is as short as it goes, and it's longer than it needs to be, so we'll be fine. Definitely don't need to lengthen that up any right now. We are reading depth, and if I paddle around, we should be making a map. A mapping's for another video. That's mounting a kayak fish locator unit. One way, obviously a way that seems to work just fine. You can use a different box if you want. Uh, if you use metal, I do recommend a grommet for that power pass through. Uh, do a little bit of cord management once I get everything figured out. But since we're moving it from one body of water to another, I definitely don't know exactly how I want to have it yet. So we'll save that for later. Thanks for joining us today. Come back at you with a Tip Tuesday video on Tuesday and a Friday video on Friday.